this moment we'd like to introduce Congressman Don Bacon. He was elected to Congress in 2016, representing Nebraska's second congressional district. And during his uh, career in the U U.S. Air Force, Congressman Bacon specialized in electronics, warfare, intelligence, and reconnaissance. And Congressman Bacon served 16 assignments, including four deployments across the globe, three of which were in the Middle East, and one assignment to Iraq in 2008 to 2000, uh, 2007 to 2008 during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Thank you so much indeed for joining us, Congressman Bacon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Don't you love, uh, we call him DVO. He's got great passion and he's, and he's a hoot to work with. He's got a lot of, a lot of charisma, as you can tell. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you tonight and I want to share my story. I became pro-Israel at the age of roughly five years old. Why was that? Well, my dad had daily devotions. I was the oldest of nine. I didn't have nine brothers and sisters at the time I was five. But I remember I said, I don't really like doing these daily devotions every day, but dad was good. He, he, knew, uh, he knew it was instilling us important truths. But one of the truths that he thought was important came right out of Genesis. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. And I have learned that since I was a little boy. And my dad was very active in politics, so he would be mad if a president didn't support Israel. And I, so I, I got this reoccurring theme throughout my whole childhood and through high school. And then when I was 15 years old, my dad sent me to, a, to Israel. I was, uh, this is 1979, but don't do the math. And I loved it. Because I, but first of all, I love history, I love geography, and I love my faith. And to be there, to see things firsthand, uh, moved me. But one thing that really stood out was when I went to the Holocaust Museum. It's different then than it is today. Uh, this is 1979. Now, I had head knowledge of the Holocaust, being a 15-year-old. But I don't know that I didn't have heart knowledge or really internalized what that meant. And going to that memorial, it really dug deep into my heart and my soul and what it really meant for each of those six million individuals, their families, what it meant to Europe. I mean, and, and that legacy or that travesty that carries on today. But really what got me was we went to the Knesset afterwards. And I had, a, I remember this tour guide, I have no idea who he was, but I remember this tour guide got in and said, you were just at the Holocaust Museum. Well, we have the Knesset here today so that that will never happen again. And my heart burned. I've never, I think my heart has had that burning passion for Israel ever since. Fast forward, I was a colonel at Ramstein, the deputy commander of Third Air Force. Now, Third Air Force oversees the 10 Air Force bases in Europe. But my three-star boss, I was the deputy, uh, also was given the mission to work with Israel, and particularly to stand up long-range missile defense, which means when you're the deputy, you get that task. And so the Israelis built a great missile, the Aero missile. And it was focused on long-range missile offense. Our job was to put in one of the, the, well, the best radar in the world. If you go there today, you can see it. It's a beautiful radar. It has a great long-range capabilities. And it's meant to help target the arrow and, and interdict or intercept incoming missiles from Iran. But that wasn't even good enough. We had to also do the infrared satellites, because even with that radar, there's three minutes or so from the launch before the radar can see it because of the curvature, curvature of the Earth. So my, another part of my task was get the infrared satellites queued in with that radar, and then we practiced every day until I got a new, a new assignment. But I was so proud to be there after I went there as a congressman to see that very site uh, where we put, put that radar in, and, and the Americans and Israelis still working together on this missile defense capability, which was used to intercept missiles and drones from Yemen since October 7th. And uh, so I, I feel pride here that we were part of a team that made that happen. When I got elected in 2016, I told my community, I told the, our Jewish community, our pro-Israel community, that I didn't want to just be a supporter of Israel, but that I wanted to be a champion. I'd like to be the champion, but we have a lot of champions here. So I want to be a champ, one of the champions, because I have no moral ambiguity about this. I have total clarity about where we should stand with Israel. To, su to summarize at least my views, I want to talk about October 7th, but I think we have a, a, a spiritual reason to stand with Israel, shoulder to shoulder. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. We have a moral reason. We need a home, a safe haven for Jews all over the world. We've had thousands of years of persecution. 
Holocaust being one of the most notable, obviously, but it's not just that. It goes way before that. We saw what happened with Hamas, why that hate that's there. Israel is that safe haven to protect the Jewish people for all over the world who are being persecuted. But I also see practical reasons. Everything I've done with the Israelis is win-win. When we sell military capabilities to Israel, they make it better. And then, they, then we get those technology gains back. We have an iterative back and forth on capabilities. Some of our best seekers on warheads today were originally ours that the Israelis improved, and now they're much better. We gain from intelligence. We have great satellite overhead intelligence. The Israelis do great on the ground. And it's a win-win relationship. And there have been times where the Israelis have taken actions that we knew that should have been done, but we're reluctant to do so. Taking down the, the nuclear reactor in Iraq, taking down the nuclear reactor in Syria, and I could go on and on, probably things that many people don't even know about, but again, a win-win relationship. And let's be clear about October 7th, that was war. And it's not just a one-time occurrence. This is going to be a recurring occurrence. As long as they have capabilities, they're going to go after the Jewish people anywhere in the world, but they are dedicated to the elimination of Israel. And that's just a fact. But it wasn't just about killing as many Israelis as they could. It was about the torture. It was about the barbarism. It was about the dehumanizing. It was, it was about debasing the people that they inflicted this, these murders on and the torture. It was barbaric. The Israelis have every right to go in and totally destroy Hamas, which means they got to totally take the Gaza Strip, right? It means they need to kill every Hamas terrorist they find. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a war fighter. That's the way we think. These folks are dedicated to the Israeli destruction. They have every right to go in and get every single Hamas terrorist they can find. And then we've got to find a way to have a, a better peace in Gaza after that. And that, that will be a challenge. But one thing for sure, there should be zero Gaza or Hamas leadership in Gaza when this is all said and done. And we need to be doing everything we can to help the Israelis get back their, the 130 plus kidnap victims that, that we have. <clears throat> My heart goes out to all the Israelis. And I will tell you, all the Jewish people in America probably know folks who were either murdered or kidnapped or no families that did. My heart's with you on that. So today, I pledge once again, you know, a pledge that I have felt in my heart from being a little, bo little young boy, that we will stand 100% with Israel. And we will defend Israel in the courts or in just in the fight for the human mind. Because right now, all this media about what's going on in, in Gaza City this, with the bombings. Let's be clear, the Israelis are following the rule of law. They're targeting Hamas targets who purposely embed themselves in schools, hospitals, and with, with citizens. They're using the citizens as human shields. They're the ones creating the crimes against humanity, crimes of war, by what they're doing. So I appreciate the opportunity to once again to state my support. And as I am often introduced in Israel, I will always be the most kosher bacon. Thank you.